All right, welcome one, welcome all. How's everybody doing out there today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Sunday or possibly Monday to wherever you are in this beautiful world, big wide world that we have. Uh, how's everybody doing out there? I hope you all had a very good weekend. Uh, I did put up a tweet. You know, weekends do kind of blow because seriously, they just move so, so slow, right? Just, uh... So this weekend has been no different than a lot of the other weekends. We kind of expected a lot of this sideways movement. Uh, and, uh, you know, here we are. We are we're just kind of putted sideways, traded in range. Uh, let's just look and see what we got. So I, I, I was we got down here not quite to our trend line support and then bounced off of it. So we never quite hit this trend line support system right here on this chart, which was down here. So you know, this is kind of, I expected a little bit more of a tap on this than to turn around a little early. It did come down, got way down here, and then just came right back around. Remember, with your MACD and RSI, they do not leave a shadow such as a wick, like you have a wick with the, uh, with the price action. So you never really get to see where they started or where they ended. Now this turn did occur on this very conveniently on a support line, right? There's a pink support line, bam, bam, almost got it into the range. Uh, you see, you can pull it back right here. You got one there, you got a touch there. So, you know, we did kind of get all the way down into this range and we did bounce up. Now, this was a nice bounce, eh, man? I, this is a beautiful little bounce, you know? Nothing that we didn't expect. We all expected for this to be trading in this range. You know, we've been talking about our count the whole time. So as we've been going through this, we've all known this is our count. We've got this count right here, right? Oh, nah, damn it. Okay, lock. All right. So here's kind of our count right here, right? We've got this larger count, right? One, two, three, four, five. This is, seems like a big wave one to me uh, right here. And this looks like a wave four. A, B, C, pretty easy to count out there. One, two, three, four, five, works out very well in that wave C right there. You can count on A, B, C, A, B, C, pretty nice. Uh, now, as I start to count this impulse wave down right here, right, I see this as, I wanna count this as a one and then a two of this wave three right, of this wave three. And we've been saying over and over and over again, you got to break over 3840 to really be bullish and not just a wick like this. Because listen, right here on this four hour chart, we put on a beauty of a wick right there. That is gorgeous, right? Beautiful, beautiful wick right there. Uh, nothing you can say. I mean, that's a, it's a gorgeous little reversal wick right there, you know? Now, this is kind of, on a super low time frame, this is kind of making a falling wedge-ish here. Uh, let's take a look at our volume. Uh, actually, we'll do the volume in a second. I want to just kind of finish this count out. So with this, you still haven't hit the 382. Let me adjust this. I'm going to adjust this just a teeny tiny bit more to the bottom there. Looks good to the top right there. I'm going to lock that back up. All right, so you haven't hit this. Uh, you haven't come up and hit the 382 yet. So now, you know, I would kind of count this as an A. This is a lot harder to count. You're going to have to go way down here to count this out as an ABC right here. This might just be a kind of a really funky. You're going to have to break this down to like two hours probably to get an A, a B, and then this is a wave one, two, three, four four, maybe drop down a little bit more and possibly work your wave five up here uh, to finish this out up at the 382. Now remember, this can go all the way up here. There's nothing that says this cannot retrace all the way up. You just cannot close over this wave one right here, right? The second you violate that wave one, this is bullish. Okay, this is bullish, but this, you know, you could, and I would have liked to touch the 382 still here. I still would like to touch the 382 here just to give you that uh, kind of that, you know, that, that little sense of, all right, that worked, right? And you can even wick over this thing, but here you kind of stopped in the middle. There's your 236 right there, right? There's your 236. I'll pull that out of there, but there's your 382. We're going to drop the 382 bar in there. 
and bam there you go welcome there it is there's your 382 right there now remember now you have support on this 236 and the 1914 look at the vamp fib look at how beautiful this thing loves to work out open and close on it close on it wick wick to it wick to it very nice if you're not using if you're using uh fibonacci the only thing I ask you to do is put on the 0.1914, and you can also do the 1.1914, the 2.1914. It works. It is a legitimate Fibonacci for crypto. Not sure how well that works in a lot of the other uh, uh, markets, but for crypto, it works really, really well. So still now, we, we, we've gone up into this resistance area of 3551. We'll show you that on our other chart. That's a super heavy historical resistance and support area. And we'll go over and take a look at that, right? I myself am just stacking shorts. That's all I'm doing. I'm just layering shorts up in here. Uh, with a with, And then I'll get out of my shorts right up into here. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, that's it. I'm just, my shorts will just get wiped out. Up at the 3800, right here, 3820, 3830. I'll just get taken right out of my shorts. I'm in a very casual short position. I've been stacking shorts right here, and that's it, right? Um, so I am expecting this to retrace, and then I am looking for one more drop down because this is just so hard not to count out a, a, a impulse wave down here, right? Uh, with the lack we have of manipulation, I would say that it's, you know, more commonly. Now, this is a weekend. We did expect for this to be slow trading over a weekend. And we can also go over and let's rip through some of our... Uh, oh, so there's that historical resistance area right there. Oop, let me grab this chart right here. I want to grab this chart. I'm going to plop this baby in the members area. And, all right. All right, um, 0.382 and point. All right, all right, so with that being said, let's kind of rip over. I want to take a look at just, we're going to look at our closes and opens and our volume. So let's get over here and see what we got going on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Whoa, that's a run on the stoke right there. Great run on the stoke. Right, very nice. Um, very nice. I'm going to take this off. I could use it, just clogs up that chart. All right, so on our four hour, let's see what we got going on our four hour over here. So on our four hour charts, um, a very, oh, look at that gorgeous shooting star over here on Phoenix, right? Uh, Phoenix is now once again, farther out of line than it has been in the past. Uh, we now have spread the distance out. Looks like about 120 ish. That's about the same 120 ish, uh, four hour, just a beaut close right there on that shooting star candle. Uh, looking at the volume, bullish volume, bullish run up. Uh, over here on Phoenix, uh, yeah, and looking at Coinbase, yeah, bullish run up, bullish price action, that looks good, we're going to run over the 6 hour, now how does the freaking count get so screwed up, see this is the issue with USDT, right, now this count was on, so our count was the same, and because of that fake BS pump we had right here, right, this bullshit pump, now the whole count is fucking screwed up again. Unbelievable how screwed up this is, right? Yeah, so this is this is horrible. Uh, now, you're on a 9 on Phoenix, right? But you're only on a 4, making a bull flag. So this definitely looks like a bull flag forming. Over here, you have a bullish flag forming. Now... If you close this out as another uh, uh, spinning top style candle and or a uh, doji style candle right here, you can be looking for this to be <clears throat> a double doji down, right? So you'd be looking for a double doji down. So watch the six hour, right? 
trying to make a bear flag, a bull flag. All right, or bull pennant. Uh, watch for a double. Doji down, right? So I'd be watching for a double doji down on the six hour. Beautiful volume, beautiful volume, beautiful volume. Uh, MACD st uh, Stokes still rising. WSMA still rising, right? Uh, right, and we're going to run up to the 12 hour here. 12 hour, 12 hour. Nice candle. Oof, boy, that's a wick. Right, wouldn't want to sit on that in a freaking public toilet, right? That's a hell of a wick right there, right? Nothing changed. It's all good volume profile. Decentish candle. That's kind of a brutal candle right there on that 12 hour though, right? That's kind of a really brutal candle on the 12 hour. All right, let's go over here to the daily. I want to look at the daily. Uh, volume dropped on the daily. So we had lower volume on the daily with price action. All right, so now we have higher time frame. All right, so the daily uh, has lower volume. So we have bearish divergence. All right. So we got bearish divergence over the last couple days. Uh, hey, Nomad, Kraken. I do, man. I am just waiting for Kraken or KuCoin or those guys to go in the toilet. I shouldn't even be charting on Phoenix because I feel I feel they've got something coming to them this year, 2019. I really am hesitant to have to change all my charts over again if they go down the toilet. I really am worried about uh, those guys. Um, yeah, still... Uh, let's just you know the day just started here but this is bear what a bearish volume profile here so like look at the volume right this is our volume right here right that is not healthy volume right this is not healthy volume now you had pick up and bearish volume Right, but this is not healthy bullish volume at all. I know a lot of people are thinking this is gonna go, you know, to the moon or whatever, but honestly, this does you know, I think this is just kind of losing steam. Right? It's especially lost a bunch of steam over the weekend. Right, I, I think we're very limited on how high we're gonna go here. I know there's a lot of bulls out there. Right, a lot of people are very bullish out there on this to keep going, but I really think we're going to get stuck in a and just we're going to come up here, we're going to hit 3700 or something like that, and we're just going to get just shut down at like 3700 or something. All right, uh, let's run up to the two day, two day, nope, no candle, three day, nope, no candle, ooh. Ah, look at that. All right, so this is really nice, right? So we all have known that this, uh, we all have known that this is the, uh, I'm just going to get all this crap. I don't use any of this crap on this chart. Um, we all have known that this is a, uh, a, uh, a three day bleed, uh, red nine, right? The gorgeous red nine. I'm going to be very interested to see if this thing resets itself on this uh, three-day chart right here. I'm going to be very interested to see if this resets itself on the three-day chart. Now, the same thing, our bearish volume has been dying on the three-day chart, right? So this is bullish divergence right there. So we've seen bullish divergence on our three-day chart as, right, three-day chart. And PA. All right, so there's a nice bright spot right there, right? There's a very nice bright spot right there. Uh, also, the three day on a red nine. All 
All right, let's see if this can flip to a green one. That would be very interesting to flip this to a green one right here, right? Now, this candle, this three-day candle right here that just played out, right? Let's look at this three-day candle down here, this green nine. Uh, it, basically an indecision candle. I would have liked this to close. I would have been a lot more bullish on this candle if it would have closed way up here, right? If we could have got this baby to close way up here, made that beautiful, nice, long-legged uh, reversal candle right there, right? Nice, gorgeous, uh, even a hammer, a gorgeous hammer candle or a hanging, uh, just a massive inverted shooting star right there. I mean, this this would have been a beautiful reversal candle. We just needed this to close a lot higher for me personally. Uh, let's go up to our weekly candle. Let's get some weak action in here. All right. And there's our weaker, weaker, week. All right. Let's take a look at the weekly candle. Uh, bearish volume dying off. Bearish volume died off. Bearish volume definitely died off. So we see a lot of bearish volume die off here. All right. Get out of there. All right. All right. So trying to clean the damn chart up. All right. So, hmm. On the weekly, this is nice. This is a little, this is some bullish action on, on the nut. Now, I don't like this candle. You're on a red four. So you put in a red four right there, right? There's your red four. Trying to get clean all this crap up. Ah, uh, there's your red four right there. Going on a green five. Not a bullish candle. This is not bullish. Like if this would have pulled all the way back up here. Uh, yes, if we could have got over 3,800, even 3,900 range, 4K. Made this a super long V bottom right push that down as a v bottom right there right but right now you're going to have to break up over 4k to make this a v bottom so in order to start to create a v bottom you're going to have to pull this all the way back up uh yes we just did close a brand new lower <laughs> low uh for the year right so we just did close a brand new lower low on that we're looking over at our uh Skipping on the bottom on our stoke. Our stoke is at almost to the bottom. Let's see here. Let's go all the way back. Yeah, Jesus Lord. Oh, that only goes back. And it's Coinbase. Freaking Coinbase. Seriously. Coinbase charts are like toilet paper. It, they just don't last long, right? You get one wipe out of them, and that's as, all, as long as they go. They only go back. You only get so many pieces on a roll. It's never enough toilet paper on a roll of freaking toilet paper. I swear to God. I know I'm in charge of changing the toilet paper at the house. And I think my wife eats the freaking toilet paper. Anybody else's wife eat the toilet paper? Hey, Jones in the house. What's going on, brother? Look at this. How you doing? Man, it'd be nice for you to call in. You don't call me. You don't text me. I always have to call and text him. Always I'm the one having to call and text Chone. He never calls me, never texts me, never writes me. Seriously, he's still mad that I was not, I didn't let him be the big spoon last time we, we snuggled. Mm. He's still mad at me. Up oh, there he goes. <laughs> All right, he's like, oh shit. Right. Hey, how's your Discord working? Uh, let's, hope it's, let's, let's hope it's pretty good tonight. Let's hope it's All right, Dave. All right, let's see if you get that midget porn off there. All right. I, I admit nothing. I admit to nothing. That's right. <laughs> all right, well, let me finish this up, and then I'm gonna let you take over. All right. Sure. Uh, hey, hey, everybody, good night. Uh, yeah, we got the. We got, that's awesome, man. We got shown in the house. That's great. So I was just finishing up this daily, this weekly candle close, saying, yeah, mm -hmm. new lower yearly low. Uh, just I don't like it as a bullish candle. We do have some bearish divergence because the volume has kind of fallen off. Right, but I, it still doesn't look that good. It's just not a good look. 
right? Let me just buzz through a couple of these charts. All right, so this is uh, I, this is one chart I would like to really point out to everybody. Let me bring this back. So this is our MACD chart, okay? And this is a J hook, right? This is a J hook pattern right here. So we are now doing a J hook pattern. So last time we tried this J hook pattern, there was just too much market weakness. In the last couple times, in fact, right here, it failed. J hook failed here. J hook failed. And here we're going to see if the J hook can make it up. Now you're coming. You broke through this lower resistance and support line, bounced up, and you're going to test that lower, uh, this higher support and resistance line right now and see if we can break through it. But, you know, you got to hold this up. This is our 12 hour bubble chart right here, right? And what happens is when you break through this thing historically and you do a bubble chart, what this is doing, this is literally resetting your indicators to take the hardest dump on you you've ever seen. Okay, so I just would like to tell everybody, be very, very careful of that <clears throat> as we go down here. Um, ooh, our daily is poking through bullish on our new indicator. That's very interesting. That's very bullish for this to break through like this. We're going to have to see how this closes. This does not like to touch this line right here. Right? And up, got to spin around our MVT chart. Uh, back up into the uh, trying. Now we're back up onto the wall. We're hitting the bottom side of the wall. We're going to see if we can break back up into this area. Uh, nice bounce off support. And I'm gonna let you, oh, the ADX chart reversed on us, right? Holy cow, ADX chart, a lot of bullish signs here, buddy. A lot of bullish signs going on here today, right? Golly. Yeah, ADX. no, it was an interesting day for sure. Daily ADX reversed, right? So the daily ADX chart reversed. And I have to say the only other real chart that I'm looking out after. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, the only other chart that I really is this one, this brand new indicator. So this is our new indicator we're using. And this one. Yeah. Break up on the daily. Right. These are all. These are all bullish. Wow. All right. I'm going to let you take over here for a second, brother. And go for it, man. What do you got? Help us out. Oh, yeah. Oh, How's everybody doing tonight? Um, so a bunch of interesting uh, price action we had on Sunday here. Um, you know, we we're trying to watch the bounce we had yesterday and trying to figure out if it was... You know, more than just one of the many uh, bounces, uh, kind of quick reversal candles um, that we've had along the way. This one here we had on December 7th, frankly, the one year anniversary almost of uh, Bitcoin's topping. We had a very nice volume profile on that one and we retraced quite a bit until we had our second uh, very, uh, you know, we had a, a clear battle in this candle here on the day on the four hour between the bears and the bulls in this movement here and uh that has led to this momentum here that we're still building on and i i, I totally agree on the low volume profile you know it still remains very suspect but it didn't take a lot of volume to move us from 3200s to 35 3600s Maybe that's a sign that says there aren't really a lot of sellers right now on this market, that the market is not prepared to dump below 3,200, you know, at least just yet. And even with this low volume environment, the price action is beginning to allow itself to at least begin to try and retackle, um, you know, upper resistance areas. We had an initial very strong rejection on the four hour. Well, on the four hour uh, upper Bollinger here with this candle. And the fact that we were able to, even on the preceding candle, remain at least in the area. 
and then follow up here with still another um, attempt to break up into the upper Bollinger here. Um, this is the, the most bullish action we've seen, let's face it here, uh, since we were way back here at $4,300, $4,400. So clearly this is notable, but we're also $1,000 down, you know, from the last time we had a similar kind of rest of this bearishness until we created uh, any sense of, you know, continuation. So this is the this is the path that we're still taking, which is just lower lows on medium time to higher time frames. And just real quick here on the daily chart, um, you know, this, this, this interesting candle, like it's a bullish candle. Clearly, there is profit taking on the upper part here. And the fact that we touched to the T, our Laura Bollinger, and it found support on it here, a kind of a similar situation here where we broke through on a bullish candle. And then we're able to use that to create some bullish momentum uh, on a lower uh, volume profile. We're trying to see a similar profile. The problem is we have so much upper resistance that still remains ahead of us here. Um, this move, you, yay, we're in the 3500s, but let's face it here. Uh, anything above 4000 just sounds ridiculous. Like if you like, if you like Bitcoin at 3500, you know, when it gets to 4k, if it gets to 4k, are you going to be buying it then? Or is it going to be a massive wash of sellers and shorts and shorts being loaded at that price point if we were even even able to get that high so there is running room i'd say to get at least to you know 3700 maybe 3750 area middle bollinger on the daily at 39 and falling so there's there's a upper 3000s case over the coming days uh argument to be made to at least allow our bollingers to get a little bit tighter um they're still pretty wide even after our bear break here um they still get a little tighter here so I wouldn't mind ranging in this three Ks. I wouldn't be surprised if we do that heading into next week. Um, but no, I don't really feel the bottom is in because we just haven't seen the volume profile, the candle profile, uh, and the capitulation that I feel it's it's accepted to be expecting. And especially since we closed out our weekly chart here, um, there's it's so much con predicting here because in one sense we're hitting a very major historic support line on the ma200 like close enough right i mean let's face it here we were off by uh you know 30 40 bucks um but we're still under the lower bollinger so i don't know this week maybe this is the week where we're able to to at least close inside our lower bb um on the weekly this is unprecedented i don't believe uh, three weeks in a row on the weekly i don't believe this has ever happened before in bitcoin history on the so downside. we're clearly putting on, on the, the downside, downside correct yeah. thank you yeah the yeah, upside <laughs> it closed out like eight the upside yes all right one, and, two, three, and four, listen, four. One, we two, did this one two three four five six uh, seven we're eight starting our eight fourth yeah, yeah after and if you even do a td on that you know we went a full nine plus two and we're only on a five here yeah so you know, seven more weeks could take us uh, into February, potentially. Um, and that would mean a break of the MA200. And we're in this area here where I don't think a lot of traders and a lot of people like have a lot of experience. And I mean, I, I don't. I never traded Bitcoin in the 3Ks. You know, there wasn't a very long time to do it on the way up in this August, September, uh, early October period here. So there's historic supports right at 3K. We talked about this numerous times. Uh, we're right there. We, we, you know, we, we found support initially fine. Let's try and build on that a little bit. Everything else looks still very extremely weak. Our RSI is just weak as, as can be or stochastic. You know, early cross here can't be confirmed. You know, we're still super low. And I want to see these get lower. These, these have not bought them yet. Both our indicators are at four. They can go to zero, which has at least happened. Like if we're, we're, we're not going to hit our zero, like if our June lows hit zero, is our next Bitcoin, you know, all-time uh, bear market low not going to hit zero with, both, with at least one indicator? So I just, you know, we're just not there yet. But could we range with a lower CMF 
profile once again. Like there's just no money coming into to this market here. And our OBV, it had a, a it tried to have a nice recovery and it gave so much of that up. So a lot of people took their profits on this bullish move from the 3200s to the $3,600 range. Yeah. Uh, Chris says, hey, any of you guys see the incoming death cross on the BTC three-day chart? Uh, that is a, like a part of, mm, one, two, three, four candle closes. I think it's about four or five candle closes away for that next death cross. What are the, the MAs uh, on that one? It's the 100, 200 MA. Mm -hmm. I, I have it oh. on my chart if you want to see it. But it's, it's, it's a ways out. I have the plotted one. Uh, it's we are the still, day after a nine, though, as well on the three day. On the three day, um, that's is, right. Yeah. yeah. So not that they can't bleed because it did. It has bled right. before. You can get the three day to bleed, and it it's something that I I still think that we have a very limited upside here before we go back down. You know what I'm saying? Based on my my count, I have so I'm still counting this out as a wave five down before we get a bounce. A real bounce. You know, and I am looking, you know, I would like to see a real nice bounce, but I just, I'm not feeling this. There's just not enough volume for me going into this bounce that's like people are excited about buying. Oh, it's such a deal. This is amazing. <clears throat> Everybody's pretty much like, nope, nope. Uh, it's too dangerous to hold. Uh, now, scalpers, a lot of people have been buying and scalping. I mean, a lot of us, you know, some alts are getting some nice pops. We're seeing some, you know, we're seeing some pretty good, you know, uh, things happening. But I'll tell you what, it's, it's you know, this is what happens when Bitcoin kind of goes sideways, which it does every weekend. All of a sudden, everybody gets goes up 300 yeah. points. And we, and, fall know, 3, we fall 3,000 points, right? And it goes up 400 yeah. points and everybody's bullish. I'm all, dude, we just fell 3,000 fucking points. <laughs> How is this bullish? And also, if you ask everybody, you know, a month ago, if they would buy Bitcoin at 3,200, they'd say they'd throw their... Throw it all in, right? Or Litecoin at $25 or Ethereum at $82. Well, we hit it. We're there. We, we, Where's we, the buyers? We had a nice bounce. Where's the buyers? But you're, yeah, where's the volume? And listen, we, we pulled ourselves off of the, uh, the uh, it was 104 billion was our low. We're at 115. So we were able to pull in $11 billion. $11 billion. Uh, and the entire market cap was, was that bounce was what was created. Bitcoin dominance is still at fifty four point nine percent. That that oops, yeah, what the heck did I do? That needs to get above sixty. I really feel that needs to get closer to sixty to 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 show an area where alts are fully contrition uh, mode, uh, full capitulation mode, and the remainder of the money is flowing into BTC, and that dominance would be pushed over sixty percent. And it's it's it's. Everything is still falling in this stair step still. You know, Bitcoin, Ripple, number two still. Uh, I don't know why. 1337 one, wants to know how much the market cap is uh, is stable coins. <laughs> Dude, That's Tether. Great question. Tether is this close to having the number one spot, guys. This close. It's like it can literally get up and be the number one spot. Well, and Vance, since you brought up Tether, I mean, there, there's something very notable happening with Tether. Remember, we had bottomed at 85. Um, we had broken a dollar, broke I think, a on dollar. a couple exchanges. Yeah, yeah, I'm I saw that. On the right one It was like a dollar point two per, point two point percent. Point two, yeah. Yeah. I and and what does that mean? I mean, is is that a stability in the Tether markets that 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 the price action is showing there? Yeah. Uh, Unbelievable. Yeah, I can't believe. Uh, yeah, it's funny that Tether, right, is our number six. It's our number six on the market cap, coin market cap. What's interesting, I think, on, mostly on the coin market cap is after six. seeing all these coins in, in the tens of billions, some in the hundreds of billions, and then can be in, in these single digits even less now. Like now that Tron is under a billion dollar market cap, um, is that is that a beginning or is that just whoa this can go a, a, I mean a crap ton lower and what are the coins that we're going to see come up here um, 
the scan of this charting over all these coins here, we see a variation of just kind of, oh, there was an uptrend here, and then everybody, everything, like, like nothing's showing that continuation. Everything has this crook into it, right? This last little bit here has this, oh, we're just, we're not, we're not continuing. We're not finding that completion. Uh, a couple are trying to hold a little better profile, you know, from a percentage standpoint today. EOS, we've seen that before. It's always a bigger winner when Bitcoin can actually have a nice bullish pop dash. Interesting. Still at $76. This was like a thousand dollars almost as well and uh mostly everything was bullish with bitcoin and has given up more or less its gains here uh made safe has had a higher low that's interesting but we're seeing a very similar profile here to whatever bitcoin's doing alts are doing and that just shows that we really haven't found that full capitulation yet and we still have no real major change in the amount of cryptocurrencies that coin market cap continues to follow and we have a uh, tweezer on the daily uh, shorts here you know and they they pretty much got uh an extension of bearish or uh, basically uh contract liquidation we'll say into the follow-up day there and they're 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 right here i think no they're right here um but uh Listen, they made it to all-time highs, and even though they're stacked so high here, uh, they could probably range here again and try and make another attempt to push even higher into all-time highs. And look at Long's just hugging this thing. Like, look at that. Just super tight. They don't want to relinquish. Oh. And they're sandwiched between the support line and the MA200 on the daily chart. Yeah. Uh, listen, I, here's what I have to say, okay? I just I feel that you know people want to know, where the hell is this going? Right. I think that's the first question everybody wants to know. Where are we going? Are we going to go up or are we going to go down? Uh, it, it's this simple, people. I, I think that looking at where we're at right now, we're at a point. We, we've been at a point that we understand and we all should understand that the market has been held up artificially in place. Uh, through a lot of different uses of the instruments that are out there to that were used by the exchanges and Tether and whatnot and what forth. And as soon as that all that rug got pulled out, now we've fallen back down to earth, right? The question that we all have to ask ourselves, right, is where do we feel is the line going to be drawn on a fundamental aspect of cryptocurrency? Right. And that's a use case. Right. Where are now the now the question is, OK, if these projects and people are going to start asking these questions very soon. OK, you've been out for two years now. You raised 40 million dollars. What the fuck have you done? Right. Where now <laughs> the question is, you know what? People are going to start asking, what have you done for me lately? Right. Uh, and that's that's I think going to be a real turning point for a lot of these tokens is they have these roadmaps that are three, four, five years long. It's just it's not viable. You can't have a three year roadmap. It's like either you're going to adopt and you're going to get adoption or you're going to run out of money. And we already see that these projects are running out of money, you know, and, and the, the, I, I made a funny post the other day about uh, did you see Justin's son? went out and said, hey, I will rescue, uh, I'll be the, I'll, I'll rescue Ethereum and I'll rescue, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, Ethereum EOS, right? Is that what mm -hmm. it is? Ethereum and EOS. And all I can think to myself is what a dick, right? Why would you come out there and tell people you're going to rescue them? What are you saying? Right? Just to say that is... It, it, it just is a no confidence vote by somebody who is in the know, right? I mean, ju you know, Justin Sun knows what's going on. He's busting his ass. He's doing, dude, listen, I, I take it off to the guy. He's a great shiller. He's a great promoter. He's got a good team. Those guys are hustling. They're making things happen, right? Uh, they're, they're doing a good job. But to have him come out and basically give a solid confirmation of a lack of confidence with Ethereum and EOS, 
right? And here is my post right here, right? Justin Sun makes a bid for EOS and, and Ethereum to migrate to Tron Network, right? I mean, this guy just basically came out and said, hey, you're fucking dying. You're fucking dying. But don't worry, I'll save you, right? <laughs> I mean, with friends like this, who needs enemies? You know, now the question you have to start asking yourself is, you know, what, what has Tron done lately? I mean, not a, Tron, what has EOS done lately? What, is, what have you done lately, EOS? What have you done, Ethereum? Now, Ethereum had its best opportunity for use case to be an actual uh, uh, fundraising vessel, right? And we've talked about this in previous shows. I feel Ethereum really, really dropped the ball. They should have found a way to uh, monetize all the fundraising that was done off the Ethereum platform. All they would have had to do is just charge a teeny, teeny, tiny transaction fee for using Ethereum, right? And they would have just made bazillions of dollars and they would have killed it. But at this point... What have you done for me lately? Right? That's all I got to ask is what have these coins been doing? And, and these questions are going to start to get raised. What are you doing? Why is it taking you so long to find adoption? And B, how much money do you have left? Right? How much money do you have left in your bank account that is able to keep these projects going? And just one of these people, show me a freaking tax return. I want to see a damn tax return from one, one of these ICOs, right? From one of these projects. Show me a damn tax return. I want to see how much money is going out the door. I want to see how much money is getting paid to the founders. You know what makes me giggle is as a businessman, I'm sorry I have to think like this, but as an ICO, yeah, I'm going to go out there and raise a ton of money and then I'm going to say, but don't worry, guys, the coins that are for the devs, and where they're locked up for two years and no one can touch them. Yeah, but what about the 40, 50, 80 million dollars you just raised? What is your salary? How much are you getting paid? Right? Yeah, you can't touch your tokens, but if you're getting a half a million dollars a year to run the project, you're basically burning up, you know, 10% of the capital or 5% of the capital over two years. You know, what is it? Am I missing something here? Joe? Yeah, I mean, and not only that, you talk about, you know, you use the word cash a few times, but it's really, they were paid in Ethereum, they were paid in Bitcoin, and they were paid in, in tokens of that ICO. So the, they are paid on a monetary value at the time that seemed like, wow, this is real money, this is real assets. And then you cut Ethereum down to 80 bucks, 90 bucks, and then you realize, holy crap, um, this value either in my company and my ICO and my project, uh, if I thought I had some value then and now I don't have much now, what the heck could it be like if Ethereum drops even to 50, you know, or if Bitcoin is mired in the 2000s for a while? I mean, these are, these are all business plans that were based on a base price of not just Bitcoin, but a lot of these ICO tokens, not just Ethereum included. And now with, you know, everybody that invested, oh, I'll do a little mining, I'll do a little uh, noting, uh, nodes and stuff like that. Like, like all that w was a capital investment that at these levels, these price levels have, have, have just been like underwater for everybody. So and then when you when you take that and how does that person reestablish himself a position in this market? And then you take on top of that where we're going to open up tomorrow. I think in you know the overall U.S. equities, China, the whole world economy, kind of feels like we're we're kind of teetering on something happening here, uh, where every major index uh, kind of has to hold their current areas, uh, kind of Bitcoin included, or else we're we're just falling into a chance of unprecedented lows. Yeah, uh, you know now. I have to say, with the U.S. economy, I don't know if anybody have ever had a chance to take a look at my chart. Uh, I have two great videos that are on the U.S. economy. And uh, let me bring them up here. It is it's in the Dow, or what do I got? A U.S. Where it is that thing? I have my U.S. economy video. Let me go find that thing. Where is that? 
Um, there it is. All right, so this was my, I haven't looked at the chart. <clears throat> so listen, every year, this is my video I did. If you guys didn't have a, ch a chance to watch it, I've got two videos. I will do a follow-up video to this uh, in about two weeks, and I'll catch up in two weeks. So my prediction, and if you go back and watch my video, I called the very, very tippy top of the market crash, right? Now, this is not a crash. This is a correction, okay? And I'm going to stick to this. I'm going to stick to this is a correction. Now, you see all of the confluence down here in this green band, right? Now, every year, we do get a pullback of up to 15% in the market. Now, we've only pulled back 10.5%. I still think we have a little way to go. We have, you know, I believe we're going to come back into this area, right? This 15%, we can fall all the way down to 15%. This has put us at 4.49%, but I do feel that we could pull all the way down to 14 to 15% before we got a retracement. And a lot of this is we've just had such an overheated market here in the United States. I mean, it's way overheated. And one of the things that's continuing to drive these giant spikes in price down is there's tons of money being repatriated, billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars being repatriated back into the U.S. And a lot of these companies are buying back up their stock right now with this repatriated money. So a lot of the money that is getting pumped for these big pumps right here is these companies buying their stocks back up in massive chunks so i but i still feel if it wasn't for them doing that also we would have retraced the 15 percent already uh which we do uh pretty 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 consistently at the end of the year here in america a lot of people take out their profits so uh but i will do a follow-up video i've already got two videos i will do a third one so coming up uh, i think we're in worse off circumstances than that to tell you the truth yeah, you know, it, it's it's just that I don't see the U.S. economy as weak right now. I just, we're not, there's there's nothing that's showing us we have any weakness in our economy except for our housing industry. Like our housing that industry was the one thing I was kind of saying. is an housing, absolute yeah. nightmare right now. Uh, other than our housing industry, I just, I feel that right now, like, everybody's got a job, right? Labor is, is stable. Labor prices are actually kind of rising, which is inflation. Inflation, you got to have inflation. Inflation is, is still roughly, is, is a good and a bad. So you've got the both. Inflation is, is, is an evil and a friend to you at the same time. So, but I, I just think our biggest challenge that we have here in America right now is not America. It's the world, it's the world mm. economy that needs to be on everyone's spotlight right now. You guys don't look at the American economy because honestly, things are actually pretty decent over here. It's France and mm -hmm. Greece, which has done a great job. It's Italy. Italy's like on the brink right now. Italy's got some serious issues that they have going on and they're trying to rectify them right now. But there's, they have some serious debt issues, uh, a lot of problems that they've had just continuing to pay for socialist uh, and welfare state policies that they just can't afford down the line. When people la live longer, you can't afford to take care of them longer. So that's an issue. So as you look at the world economy, uh, you need to look at these places like that and to really watch them and to see what's going on in these other uh, really important economies. Uh, even Germany, right? I think Germany is a very stable country, but having a bunch of socioeconomic issues based on their uh, what's going on with their politics right now. Yeah, and they have a new chancellor too, and France is, uh, what, oh. riots and flames. So yeah, there's a lot happening in the EU, uh, Brexit, and our own geopolitical politics in the United States. Uh, as we head into 2019 <clears throat> and a divided uh, government in the United States, once again, uh, that's going to play a lot into it as well. And all the other stuff that happens to do with politics in the U.S. But no, I think there's something happening here with trade, and with China, right, with and China. With, uh, Huawei uh, arrest. Uh, we're we're, we're so close to this 
Highway. Yeah, uh, my buddy uh, is actually one of their. I have a really good friend who is one of their yeah. top top guys at Highway. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's, I, it's I, a big, I haven't I mean, called it. It's a big deal. I mean, and and the fact that China has you know asked the U.S. ambassador. I mean, these are geopolitical business moves that could really uh, play a big part in in the entire economy. Because uh, you're right, it's very shaky here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we had a couple yeah. questions. Uh, Mo, which is yeah. actually Mo, dude, I've watched some of Mo's videos. Great stuff, Mo. Congratulations on your channel. Really good stuff. A great guy to watch, people. Mo just commented on there. Uh, Mo says, government's sin. We don't have money to help society. You know, it, it, and for that, what one of the things that's coming down is the governments of the world, and, and, and now we're going to go, we're trying to keep this still focused on Bitcoin. I don't want to get too far off Bitcoin, right? But uh, one of the things that you have is you have governments all over the world definitely overspending on themselves and on wasteful products and projects, just like Mo points out, you know, how much money is spent on bombs and armed forces and all that stuff all over the world, right? But uh, one of the things you see is uh, like I would like to, you know, gear this back to crypto. And one of the things, if you look at China and one of the kind of the predictions that I have for next year, uh, 2019, early 2019, is I see money pouring in from China. Now, China just legalized for people to buy Bitcoin. Okay, so it's it's legal now for you to purchase Bitcoin and hold it as an asset where it was illegal before or, or un, uncertain. And uh, one of the things I would like you guys to know is I am also predicting or uh, I don't know if that's the correct term, but I believe that uh, with the Chinese economy worsening, which I still think it is going to do, and after all of the numbers come out for 2000, the end of two, fourth quarter 2018, there's going to be a massive move, I feel, of Chinese investors into Bitcoin. I think a lot of money because they're looking for a safe haven for their dollar, for the RMB, Right. And China is on China is the one that is on shaky ground. It is not the United States people. It is not the US. I just got back from China. I was there. I know the Chinese economy is in a massive state of flux uh, and is not to the positive side. The uh, corporations and companies are literally just getting liquidated daily over there and are running to the government of China and the local provinces to bail them out. And these these companies and corporations, unlike America, can just run to the government. The government will buy a controlling stake in them, and they'll slowly sell it back to them over time as they become profitable again, instead of allowing these companies to fail. Because it's that whole big bank thing like we had here in 2007, when the United States government bailed out all the banks. Uh, only difference is the U.S. government is a bunch of freaking morons, right? The U.S. government is a bunch of freaking paid idiots who could have made a bunch of money for the U.S. consumer and the U.S. taxpayer by selling the banks back to the the banking idiots. Instead, we just gave them the money, and then they turned around, and the money that we gave them, they just made a killing on, right? They just made a killing on by giving it back to the U.S. government. It's a whole, yeah, it's just what a joke. It was a joke where the Chinese government is much smarter about that. They'll buy your company from you with taxpayer dollars. They'll hold the majority and the controlling interest in your company. If they don't like how it's being ran, they'll switch some shit up and put their own people in there. And then at the end, they make their money back plus some, right? Hand it to the Chinese. They're very, very, very smart businessmen. I tell you what, the two people you never want to get into a negotiating uh, uh, deal with in the world. You never want to start negotiating with an Indian and or a Chinese businessman because you're going to end up walking out the door just happy you have your underwear on and that's it. Right? Or a stripper. They, or a stri <laughs> In your case, that's a losing proposition every single time. Right? It goes to a good cause though. She's going, she's putting herself through college. Right? So you're putting yourself through the University of Arizona. Why are you stripping in Vegas? Hmm. That's <laughs> <laughs> online. online. That's right. Yeah. What happens online stays online, people. All right. So let's get back to Bitcoin here. 
Sorry, everyone. Yeah, Got I don't, don't really have much, much more. It's funny how we're 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 trying to analyze these ten percent moves. I mean, thirty three hundred to thirty five hundred, and then we pull back to um, you know a lower time frame here, and and we're we're just flirting around in these thirty five hundred dollar areas here, and we're trying to see okay, maybe we can build on incredible bearishness. Fine, doesn't change the fact that. A majority of people, uh, retail people, just aren't able to really play in this market, unfortunately, anymore. Like, either their bags of all coins just broke so low, or their Bitcoin holdings, or they just, you know, it's like we've waited so long to get down t to this area, and it's it's here, and now there's a struggle to either want to feel like the 3k area is is a meaningful bottoming area or if it's just going to be another short-lived bounce followed by another leg down we are finding support in this area though after several days and that is notable our volume profile is still terrible um and we're in this low market uh low volume all around environment so We've seen this before where it doesn't take that much energy to really push through uh, to create some bullish momentum in these areas here. But, you know, until we can get at least over 38 to $4,200, we have so many full body candles, especially on the three day and then, of course, on the weekly that we still have to tackle to even try and get uh, some semblance of, of any kind of a trend change. Lower BB at 36.64, it still remains an obstacle. Now, we got into it intra-week last week. I expect we'll get into it this week as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think we there's there there's enough of a case to hold support, at least for the time being in this area here, um, and try and build on that. But this might be just another scenario where we um, have one more attempt to reset a lot of our oscillators before we take that last uh, kind of breath down. And um, like, uh, I don't know if, if it continues to make sense um, in regard to uh, doing analysis on um, the 2014, 2015 fractal, just because like, I agree that a lot has changed uh, since then and stuff. And even in that case where we had <clears throat> a bottom, a bounce, and then uh, arranging for almost a year, there's still nothing in our monthly chart <clears throat> that suggests anything of a, of a trend change, to say the least. And I'm still eyeing my lower Bollinger, which will jump a lot um, once we cross into January um, higher as some kind of interaction on the actual price action. Our MACD is still extremely bearish and our stoke you know we've had a couple monthly stoke almost crosses we actually did have a cross here okay in september right and then it just it just was a total fake out so any pinch here is like whatever but if we can get our our trilling indicator which is our orange line and on a monthly which is it takes a lot to get this thing down to the bottom and we're at, you know, point two. If we can get both, I, I'd, I'd feel very comfortable in, in calling a, a bottoming area at that, at that price level there. Um, but for, for, for now, there's enough of a case to, to break a little bit more bullish and try and at least allow the bulls to retest these areas. And very lastly here, um, we see that the shorts have a little bit more room to fall and the longs have a little bit more room to rise. Uh, but that's what we're talking about here. Just a little bit more, a little bit more. We're still in the Bitcoin 3000s. We don't have any buyers. Even at this, even at these prices, there's no rush to, to buy. And if Bitcoin hits 4K, don't feel like, oh, now I want to buy because you had plenty of opportunities in the mid threes. And frankly, the higher we get, the more resistance we're going to find. There's still a case to get... Um, a little higher i like to use my ema 12 and 26 and right there <clears throat> we see okay we broke our 12 on our six hour and this was tremendous not tremendous but it was decent enough resistance down resistance 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 
Okay, break bullish. And now my 26 remains our near-term targets. And we're sandwiching between our middle Bollinger. And because of this, upper BB falling, 38.50s here. So there's a case to go a little higher and still putting in a lower low overall. Yeah, we are. I, I just I'm, I'm I'm actually looking at my trades right now. Um, all right. So let's take a look at, uh, you know, there's yeah, there's no reason we can't go a little bit higher here. Um, really quick. I just want to go over a couple of my little trades I did make. Uh, I really have been kind of trying to trade safe here. And uh, let me bring this over real quick. Pull this out. All right. So yesterday I made a, where's my TRX? So I did make a call on TRX yesterday. Uh, so TRX was all the way up here to the tippy, tippy, tippy top. And I said, bullish, looks very bullish on, uh, I said, this is very bullish on the, uh, um, uh, you're a blank screen. Right oh, now. oh, sorry. I'm at a blank screen. There we go. Got it? Yep. Sorry. There we go. So uh, this is what I was seeing yesterday. I said, you got all these TD9s on TRX. Uh, we we're all the way up at the tippy tippy top right here. I said, uh, TRX USD looks very bullish, right? And TRX BTC looks very bearish. So we had the absolute inverse. So I did open up a, a short on BTC, TRX BTC. And uh, let's see how they, you know, that did work out. So you can see here, this did work out right here. This played out very nicely. Uh, it did fall out. We did get the short call on the on the beast scalper. Now, I'm not quite sure how long this will play out. So this seat, this is it. I called this out bullish. I said, you know, I have a nice descending wedge with a descending channel with a falling, uh, falling wedge with a descending channel. And we got the long call on this to completely the opposite. Long call here, short call here. So the price action did break up. Uh, we broke out of this wedge. I said, this looks bullish. That looks like a right, falling wedge and broke out of it. This looks bearish. <laughs> Rising wedge broke below it. Freaking go figure here how that worked out, right? But that worked out pretty nicely. I did get into a trade. There's my trade. So, eh, it's something. It's a little bit of something. It's not that big. I opened up half a million contracts and as a short at a 5X, eh, it's all right. I mean, it's so-so. It's not even going to buy me a freaking sandwich today. So, uh, we'll have to see how that goes. So, that was my one and only real call. I also said that I will be layering shorts up higher. So I will be laddering shorts up into here, and uh, that was it. I mean, I'm really just trying to look for to load some shorts up right here. I do not like the market volume. I do not like the uh, this being a weekend. I am looking forward again to another possible bloody Monday, if not late night bloody Sunday. Uh, I do feel that, uh, oh, did I get that? Is it, all right, yeah. So I, I, I am, you know, as I zoom through all of my things, I look to over here, I come over here, I see this historical support and resistance line, right? You see this is our weekly right here. This is our, uh, on the weekly, that come all the way across, 3,600. So I do have, sh I have shorts layered right up in here. I'll be looking to short this right back down. Now I'll get snapped out of this. Look at the, here's this next support and resistance. 36.65, I've got shorts layered all the way up to there. And I will get blown out of these shorts at 3,800, right? I will get blown right out of my shorts. It happens to Chone all the time when he goes into New York City to make those $100,000 a year strippers. They blow him right out of his shorts in a better way than I get blown out of these shorts, hopefully, right? Uh, looking at this, I still think this is going to be a possible up J-hook chart and then fall back over. Uh, bouncing on the support 2014. BLX chart trying to rebound right here very nicely. If you go back, back in uh, right here, here we are. Last time we had the same situation happen. Uh, you had the top, top nipple dump, and look, you've got a little more support down here than you had previously. So we're going to have to see how this continues to play out here. This is bullish. We just said that. This is our uh, new indicator. Uh, it did bounce off, trying to re -out, rally back up. 
I don't see this going much higher than 3,700 and rolling back off here, okay? Uh, you did have some nice bottoming candles, spinning top, spinning top, reversal candle. I would like to see the three-day TD change hands. Uh, baby Bull Jesus still a long way down. Uh, that, 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 all the same. We already talked about this. Uh, oh, look at that. I said it's going to go back up and then come back down. We'll see if this turns out like a big inverse head and shoulders. Now, if this turns out like some massive inverse head and shoulders, we are going to finally get our bounce here. Okay. Now look at how, you know, we ran all the way back up here in this. And let me pull this off. Ran all the way back up here, right? This huge run back up right here. From there to there at the bottom of our ADX chart continued lower now you have a higher low on your indicators but a lower low on your price action all right i i don't you that's bearish people that is bearish you want to see a uh, this should if this was bullish this would have been a higher low on the price action correct john Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you would add a higher low on your price action here, and then we would have bounced up. This is this is bearish, right? This is not what you want to see. This means this indicator just reset to dump on you again. This indicator could go up one more time and just dump on you. And listen, I still feel we're very, very, very low here, and we're close to getting a true relief bounce. If this is it, I'm wrong, and I'm going to be off by a a couple hundred freaking points because I'm looking for a relief bounce between 3157 and 2750. I could be wrong, right? I, hey, listen, I've been wrong before. We've all talked about this in the past. I did get married. I got married late. I had kids late, okay? So much for my retirement plans. I was planning. I have a, I had a ton of money set aside. I was going to go retire on the beach somewhere. I was going to lay around, drink virgin margaritas, get $7 happy ending massages all day. And maybe not all day, but at least, you know, once every other couple days, I was going to get a nice massage. And, you know, pfft, there go those retirement plans, right? Now I'm back on the 18-year plan, and I'm screwed. Can you imagine how much college is going to cost? That's why I work here 24 hours a day trying to help you people so I can make enough money for my daughter to go to college someday. If not, she's going to be stripping and dancing for guys like Chon, who I hope will let her steal, he'll let her steal his Ferrari and bring it home. I will be so proud of her, okay? So uh, looking over here... Uh, baby, oh, let's go to Baby Bull we Jesus weekly chart. Oh, trying to get a little bouncy, bouncy out of here on the weekly ADX chart. Uh, we have no history, no prior history of bouncing out of here. Uh, we'll see what happens if that support level holds. Baby Bull Jesus is so close, we can almost smell the poo. Our WMA chart getting a little bounce out of look into our resistance area, rolled over, rolled back up. Okay. Right, we rolled back up. Now the next resistance area isn't for a little while here. You got to go up a little higher to get into this next resistance area. Right, there's a yellow one right there. So we're gonna have to see. You know, this can pull up. This moved up really nicely, and we had a nice little price pull up. Historical volatility chart doing a whole big old monster head and shoulders. Uh, longs to shorts. Shorts just fell out. There is not going to be a short squeeze, people. Uh, I don't know why people keep thinking there's going to be a short squeeze. We had a moment of hope for a short squeeze up here. It did not happen. This was not a short squeeze. Uh, I still look at this as a giant head and shoulders. Once I'm proven wrong, I will remove that. But this still looks like a mega head and shoulders right there. Uh, indicator still low, broke low, ugly. All this shit is ugly. Oh, bounced off support right here. Very nice bounce off support of the oversold area. Now, this is an interesting chart. This is our stoke. Our stoke is bouncing at the bottom here, okay? If you go back even deeper, which let's keep our fingers crossed that this is not where we're going to go back to, right? This is a bearish area right here, right? This is all bearish in here, okay? So what happens is as you go bearish, you plummet out of the sky, you bounce, you reset your indicators, you then bounce deeper, deeper and deeper and it gets really freaking ugly right so we bounce down we have not we have not bounced lower here right we have not bounced lower and now you're kind of breaking over these resistance areas 
So you're gonna have to scoot this up here. If this thing resets all the way up here, right? Now, once again, we just talked about this, right? When your indicators are higher and your price action is lower, which it is here, look at how far this thing shot up. Your price action is barely moved. If this thing were to take a tank right now and dive down here, this thing would go down hard, okay? So we'd really have to watch this as this thing crashed out. Uh, you're watching, you've got your beautiful bounce of your Bollinger Bands. Uh, I am a little upset because I missed my lows, uh, my lows uh, down here by like literally like 60 points. I'm a little bit upset. My lowest order right there would miss by 60 points. And we still haven't touched the 200 MA. Let's see how far we can pull out of this. I do not like the weekly candle. Sam, I am. Do we have anything else to add over there? Please, people, give a lovely shout out for our lovely co-host here, Chone, the man, the myth, the legend. I do have Johnny all one watching this channel. His ass was texting me. He never calls me either. Between him and Chone, I feel like they're side piece, right? Neither one of these guys ever call me. It's always me calling them. This is completely a one-sided relationship. Johnny always wants to be the big spoon. Chone always wants to be the big spoon. I tell him only after you buy me a really nice dinner. None of that drive through shit. You're going to take me in. We're going to eat inside McDonald's or Burger. Burger King. We're going to have a very romantic meal with the clown and uh, something nice with the bag, with the whole colorful bag. I want some ketchup packets and I want you to pour my ketchup packets for me to make me feel special. Okay, listen, do me a favor. Right. Come on over here. This guy does some amazing one on ones, right? And not the kind that he does in New York and the strip clubs. He does some really good one on one sessions with you to help you get you guys up to. Uh, to snuff on your uh, your charts. He'll help you set all your charts up. It takes about an hour and a half to do it. He asks for a measly, it's a measly like $100 to $125 to do that. I mean, you know, listen, what you're going to get out of that is going to last a lot longer than what you're going to get out of a strip club in Vegas, right? This is the kind of thing that's going to keep giving and giving and giving. Actually, I take that completely back. What you can catch in Vegas will keep going forever and ever and ever. Ignore that, okay? Think of this in the more positive, what you'll get forever out of Chone. So give the man a holler. Show, get over there. How come you can't, can you message you? Can people message? Yeah, they can message him. So get over there. Send the guy a DM. Right? Ask for some naked selfies. Ask him to prove that he's not Seth Rogen, who I see, still think he is. And uh, that's it. Listen, it is the weekend. I am not going to ask for anything at all. I'm not going to shill anything other than the Chone Monster and the fact that I want you to go out there, give your family a hug. This is the holiday weekend that I want everybody to go out there, spend some time to yourself. Please, 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 all I ask this weekend is that you go out, you do something. This is the you have a couple hours left in this Sunday. Hug your wife, hug your family, kiss your kids, do something nice, spend some time to yourself. This weekend is going to be slow trading. This is why I've been saying this. I am the vamp. This is Chone, and we are out. Peace.